diabetes mellitus means copious amounts of sweet urine. Of course, they named it that before they knew how to test glucose, so don't ask how they knew it was sweet. The medical profession used to be a much tougher job. I'm Jackie, here to answer questions about my journey from that leak insect to trim strong and healthy. So both type 1 and type 2 diabetics have too much glucose in their blood, and it's so much that it spills out of the kidneys into the urine. So how can I say that glucose isn't the problem? Well, type 1 diabetics don't make insulin or make very little, which is the hormone that allows glucose into the cells. Usually this is due to damage to the beta cells with the pancreas, the source of insulin. Without insulin, the cells get no fuel and can starve to death. The problem is not too much glucose, but too little insulin. Before a group of Canadian doctors discovered an isolated insulin, type 1 was nearly universally fatal. It's pretty clear type 1's problem isn't glucose, but lack of insulin. When I speak of reversing diabetes, I'm not talking about type 1's. There are some who have a little insulin production left, what is called the honeymoon period, and with a very strict diet, that period might be extended. In that phase, the T1 may get by with little or no in injected insulin, but even that is not a cure. The damaged beta cells are not rejuvenated, producing insulin the way a non-diabetic does. As far as I know, all so-called cures for T1s are just outright scams. No one has figured out how to regrow beta cells. Type 2 diabetics have a very different disease. It's called diabetes mellitus because of high blood glucose. But type 2 diabetes is caused by a phenomenon called insulin resistance. Now you might think that either you're normal or have type 2 diabetes, but that's not the case. Diabetes develops slowly over time. It's a gradual process. First, we have a pancreas trying to control blood glucose, doing so by producing lots of insulin. So that is the first thing that actually goes wrong. Insulin levels are too high. If the particular pancreas involved is really oversensitive, you can get reactive hypoglycemia, low blood glucose. We rarely test insulin blood levels, so usually your doctor won't notice there's anything wrong yet, unless you do have reactive hypoglycemia. As the process develops, other things go wrong. Some of these are measurable, so your doctor may diagnose you with metabolic syndrome if you have three of the five signs, which I'll show on the screen. As these high levels of insulin continue, metabolic syndrome can develop into prediabetes and then into diabetes. Though we have criteria for metabolic syndrome and cutoffs for when exactly we diagnose prediabetes and diabetes, the fact is that the unusually elevated insulin has been ongoing for some time before any of these other diagnoses come about. Long before there's any high glucose to measure, insulin has already been too high for some time. The reason it develops into metabolic syndrome, then prediabetes and eventually diabetes, is because the high insulin causes insulin resistance. Hello, Kanga. The insulin is there. In fact, most type 2s make way more insulin than normal people, but it doesn't work properly. The cells resist it. The pancreas has been crying wolf for too long. The body stops believing it. Insulin resistance is the root cause of type 2 diabetes, along with a myriad of other conditions. Even before insulin resistance has begun, the elevated insulin can cause problems. High blood glucose is a late symptom of hyperinsulinemia, which has been deteriorating the health of the affected individual for some time before metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, and diabetes enter the picture. So, the question is, how do we reduce insulin levels? Well, I'll discuss that soon, so subscribe. If you want to jumpstart, I'll see you in Eat Like a Bear after you try the three-day challenge. Link to the right. And Kanga, you're in the way. Kick diabetes to the curb.